These are places iconic to Singapore. Teo Heng KTV, Zook, Sungai Road Thieves Market, Tangling Halt. It's a community, it's an experience. It's a place where so many people have met their life partners. We have people like Alice, which is our village chief. We got a village chief. But now we are at risk of losing them. It's all empty, and it's only been a couple of months. These are the places we will miss. I am Dr. Leslie Tay. In this episode, I will be rediscovering one of Singapore's oldest HDB estates, Tangling Halt. But it's all about to disappear. Tangling Halt is due for the biggest selective on block redevelopment scheme in Singapore this year. 31 residential blocks and 8 commercial blocks and their famous food stalls and quaint heritage shops will be demolished by the end of the year. I want to find out how much we will lose as the people of Tangling Hop bid their beloved township goodbye. Many know me as Dr. Leslie Tay, the family doctor. But most recognize me from my food blog, I eat, I shoot, I post. For over a decade, I've been searching out some of the best places in Singapore to eat and the history of their food. So this is the fish. My wife Lisa is also a foodie and the inspiration behind some of my most memorable food journeys. Dear. Mm. What are you working on? The recipe video. Ah, okay. It'd be a good recipe, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks good. Hey, you know what? I feel like eating pancing kuih lah. Mm, nearby market have ah. I feel like eating the one in Tang Ling Hong. Tang Ling Hong, I got to drive there. It's quite far. <laughs> hey, but you know that Tang Ling Hong is going to unblock very soon. I think the old man said he was going to retire or so. Yes, pancing kuih is really good. So I think you better go before, you know, they yeah. unblock. Oh, this time I don't know whether still got no. Then you better go right now. Oh, okay, okay. Go, 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 go. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Tangling Halt is one of the first five districts of Queenstown, Singapore's first satellite estate. Completed in 1962, the little township and their rows of 10-storey flats with their diagonal staircases would become an icon of the Tangling Halt estate. One of these blocks holds a special memory for me. You know, I remember as a kid coming to Tangling Hall to visit my grandparents and I remember the unit was on the ground floor. Let me try to see whether I can find my grandparents' unit. This could be it. My mum gave me a unit number. I think this could be it. This is where my mum actually grew up and she always tells me they got so many people in the house, that's why she got married quickly to get out of the house. <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture for my mum. I haven't been back here for over 40 years, but now that I know that all this is gonna be demolished uh, towards the second half of this year, I needed to come back and have uh, one last look. You know, things are like this, isn't it? I mean, we take them for granted until we find out, hey, it's really going to go, it's going to disappear. And suddenly you feel the sense of loss. Quite sad. As I walk past these 50-year-old flats, I feel like I'm walking through a ghost town as quite a few of the residents have already moved out. 
But for Mr. and Mrs. Devarajan, they have lived here for 25 years and they intend to stay until the very end. My children all grown up here. So this place holds a lot of old memories. Yeah, old memories. We have my precious memories. My next neighbour is an auntie, 97 years old. If I am late from office, she will come and knock the door to find out if my daughter is alone at home. And during Chinese New Year, her children, they will come and give Hong Kong to my daughter. So like this is very nice. And slowly, one, up, one by one, they all left. So what are your plans after this place is demolished? I think within six months, we have to move it, I think. That after by the, the HDB March, letter. they will give us a letter, I think. So all the old friends, all the old neighbours, all go to different parts. Yeah. And then you miss some of the hawkers here, the yes, favourite yes. food. The mainly the food. Nestled between Tangling Hawk Road and Commonwealth Drive is the old Tangling Hawk Market. There are only 28 stalls here, but they include some of Singapore's best and most famous stalls that have helped place our hawker food culture in UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage List. One of them is Tangling Hall Original Peanut Pancake, which has been serving up one of Singapore's all-time favourite snacks since it was first opened in 1965 by Mr Ting's father-in-law. My wife and I just love Mr. Ting's pancakes. They have been cultivating the mother starter since 1965, which gives their pancakes a distinctive and unique flavour. This traditional pancake is denser and chewier than the ones we usually eat and costs only 80 cents a piece. But Mr. Ting is already in his mid-70s. And with the market due to be demolished soon, the future of his stall is now uncertain. Around the corner from Mr. Ting's stall, a pair of siblings have been running two of Tangling Hot's most popular stalls for the last five decades. 72-year-old Madam Ngeng Ka Cheng has been selling braised duck noodles since 1969. Now that's as long as I've been around for. Madam Ngeng first started as a street hawker and her stall was right next to the rubbish collection centre. She would have to stop serving food every time the rubbish truck came by to pick up the rubbish. In the 1990s, her younger brother Ngeng Jui Chai joined her at Tangling Hawk Market selling laksa. Considered one of the most popular laksa stalls in Singapore, Wei Laksa has sneaking long queues that start from 6 in the morning. Tang 以前是年輕人來吃,現在變成父親,還有上一代,變成祖父了,他帶他孫子來吃,差不多有去三代四代了,你要嗎? But as I continue my journey down memory lane, 
I discovered that the losses at Tangling Hall goes deeper than I ever imagined. They never feel anything. Why did they tear <laughs> it down? Since it was first built in 1960, Tangling Halt has seen many of its icons come and go. The trains that used to rumble past are gone, leaving no tracks behind. The old Van Houten chocolate and Citron TV factories are now a fading memory. This year, its 10-storey flats will go under the wrecking ball in the selective on-block redevelopment scheme. One of my all-time favourite places for hawker food is the Tangling Hawk Market. It'll be the last to go in three years' time. With every store being so different, they represent different cuisines, different cultures, and that's just what Singapore is. So if it was to go away, it would be very sad. <laughs> A stone's throw away from the Tangling Hawk Market are three hexagonal blocks that make up the Tangling Hawk Food Centre. One of the stalls here is Alima's Kitchen. The stall has been around since the food centre first opened in 1967. Started by Yusuf's father as a drink stall, Yusuf and his wife began selling traditional Malay food when they took over in 2009. But unable to keep up with the intensive labour required, they have now reduced their menu to just two dishes. Longtong goreng and nasi sambal goreng. How many years have you been here already? This store here will be around almost 49 years ago. That time I was 13. After school, we come and help my father in the afternoon to do the drink store. All ah, this. so you're doing uh, what? Tetare or this? Ah, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Right. The Tangling Hall Food Centre was originally built as two separate blocks. It was rebuilt into its current triple hexagonal form in 1981. I heard this whole place is going to be demolished. Yes, correct. When are you all planning to move? Maybe in October. How about next generation? Is your are your kids yeah, thinking of kids, he, taking he over? Yeah, my kids keen to take over, but now he still uh, do some his job. Yeah. But before he's helping me half the day selling uh, burger, chicken fry, everything. Oh, you selling burger already? Yes, 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 before. So, so next generation want yes, to... Yes, maybe he will take over selling uh, those items. Switch to the whatever yeah, they like yes, to... Yes, to yes, yes, yes. Our hawker culture is so much an integral part of our Singapore identity. So, it will be very sad if we lose it. So it's really up to all of us to help preserve our hawker culture. There's a museum here in Queenstown. Turns out, this is Singapore's first community museum. Opened two years ago by non-profit organisation My Community, Museum at My Queenstown is filled with artefacts from bygone industries and buildings that were once part of the neighbourhood. Hey, hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Leslie. Welcome. Welcome to the Queenstown Museum. Victor is one of 150 volunteers who help to manage and curate the museum. Touched by the kampong spirit when he first moved to Tangling Hall six years ago, he joined my community and now gives guided tours of his neighbourhood. So Queenstown is the first satellite town in Singapore that was planned by the British. So you can see the idea of having work, live and play, there are plans for schools, there are plans for recreational parks around the area. And over here, you can see the namesake of Tangling Hall. So Hall is actually a railway term. The Singapore railway line was built by the British in 1903 at a cost of $2 million to carry goods and passengers to Peninsula Malaya. There were two stations in Queenstown, one at the former Archipelago Brewery Company on Alexandra Road where IKEA now sits, and the other at Tangling Hall Industrial Estate. Victor also showed me a $1 note from Singapore's first currency, the Orchid series. 
with Tanglin Hall's iconic 10-storey HDB blocks and their distinctive diagonal staircases commemorated on the back of the note. They tore it down, I think it was 2015. So many things all disappearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did a farewell party for the block. Oh. So we got old residents to come back. We opened up some of the old units. We did a photograph exhibition there as well. My wife's family used to live there. Uh -huh. They torn down our house and then they never built anything. Why did they tear it down? Maybe the last part of the museum tour, we'd like to talk about the people of Queenstown and Downing Court. So this is an interesting compilation on the various, I would say, prominent figures of the kampong. Yeah. So we have people like Alice, which is our village chief. Of we got area. a village chief. We have a village chief here. Okay. The Queen of Queenstown. Oh, that's a nice name. <laughs> if we meet up before later, you can tell her that. So the museum is only this big, but really what captures the spirit of Downing Court is the people the stories and the kampong spirit. So why not, let's take a walk around and we can take a look at the larger museum. Sure, sure. So this is Hock An Confectionery. That is also one of the very long time residents that we have here in Tang Ling Hall. So you can yeah. see all the very old school cakes that they used to sell. Oh. And their most popular item is actually the baguette that they make themselves over okay. here. And they call it French loaf. Jam Tao Lo Di. Hock An Confectionery has been around since the 1960s. And everything that you see, from its buttercream cakes to fragrant French loaves, are all freshly baked by its owner, Li Bu Seng. Wow, oh, Uncle, you still working? Ah, it's like this. I'm like this. You've been here for a few years. 三十多年了三十多年但是这个店这个店五十多年了五十多年关了之后你们打算怎样老了退休了这样就没有接手啊没有人要买过来学这个没有了嗯<笑> Well, this is the kind of bread I used to eat when we were kids, you know. There's something about the, the smell, the aroma, the texture that is very, very old school. Such a pity that this whole place is just going to be demolished and they are going to retire. So you got a very short uh, time to come down to this uh, confectionery and find yourself some old school breads. As I explore and uncover the charms of this 58-year-old neighbourhood, Hello, Alice. Hi. Hello. There is one resident who stands head and shoulders above the rest. I was told that you are the village chief, but I thought you were you're the queen of Queenstown. <laughs> This year, the iconic flats, shops and heritage food stalls at Tangling Hall will be torn down under HDB's 79th Selective on block Redevelopment Scheme. Today, Victor Lee from Museum at My Queenstown is showing me around the neighbourhood. Imagine my delight when I come across a snack I used to love as a kid. Kids will love, 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 love this. <laughs> Sure. Uh, what do you call it? Uh? Uh, Joe Biscuits. Joe Biscuits. This is the most iconic old school biscuit, I think. And uh, I'm sure they have those pineapple biscuits, right? Over here? Yes. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is good. As I walk around the estate, I notice that many of the shops have been here since Tangling Hall was first built in the 60s, including Alice Tan's hair salon. Hello, Alice. Hi. Hello. 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 Like many business owners here, she worries what will happen after they're forced to leave the neighborhood. What do you feel thinking about the that you spend 50 years here and then they're gonna just just gonna 
destroy everything. 有点可惜哦。嗯，因为在在这里栽培了这么多感情在这边哦，嗯，工作也每个很合得来，顾、嗯、客也合得来，就会感觉有点失落失落，嗯，有点不开心这样来、嗯，到时候我也不感觉不懂要怎么接受。<笑>像 Alice， many residents have sentimental feelings about their friends and connections in Tangling Hall. I took my camera out, walk around, walk to the track. The track was gone. Ten story, they're torn down already. My friends who once lived here, I texted them. I said, "Hey, I think we should come back here before they tear it up." Yeah, just for old times' sake. I was there. I will miss this place. This place, one of the safest. 我六十年代不会讲电，一定会讲电的嘛。讲电朋友好很久啊。As I near the end of my tour of the neighbourhood, I finally meet the other Alice, who is hailed as the village chief of Tangling Hall. One of the head volunteers at the Queenstown Residents Committee, Alice Lee, is a familiar face to many residents, having lived here for 53 years. I was told that you are the village chief, but I thought you were you're the queen of Queenstown. <laughs> I'm wondering why is it you are the village chief? Not like because I used to help them to keep the key in my house. Wherever they need the key, they will lost the key. Anything, they will come to my house. One of the uncle lost the key. He had to call the key maker midnight and come and open the door. They could charge eighty dollars. And then I say, okay, now you can come over to my house and get the key. Wow, such a nice view. You're gonna miss this view. Very nice yeah, greenery. Yeah, that's right. Every afternoon, uh, five o'clock, I will come down and take the big uh, photograph because. Some of the view every day is different. The sky, everything is different. Wow. Uh, okay. Then I can keep, and next time I see, wow. I can keep for memory. Right? Well, Tangling Hall has turned out to be quite an amazing journey of discovery for me. Before this, I used to come here only for the pancakes and the braised duck. But after spending some time here, you begin to realize that this place is more than just an old estate. There's plenty here that links us back to the past, from the trains that used to rumble by to the residents who have spent over 50 years living here and calling this place home. In a few years' time, all this will be gone, and all we have left are a few items in a museum and memories of a bygone era.